What's up, YouTube? It's your main man, ABD Hero, back again with another video. Today's video, we're talking about Deion Sanders and Jackson State. Um, Shador Sanders, his son, amazing game, Travis Hunter. Um, but but for me, I don't really want to talk too much about the, the X's and O's of the game, but also I just want to touch on how they shaking up the culture. We're going to watch this press conference from after yesterday's 59 to zero, 59 to three win over Florida State. And we'll dig a little bit deeper. Let's go. Triple B's. AB the hero. Back at it, baby. All right, so first things first, I want to say this. Um, I played college sports many moons ago over at Iowa State. I played juco ball over at um, Independence Community College. Um, that's where they did the Last Chance U series the last time over there. So um, I, I have had some experience with playing the game, right? And I think that it's so interesting to me to see Deion Sanders play the game because he is one of the most recognizable figures in football, period. And he is at a program that does not necessarily um, off name value match the stature of a Deion Sanders. And for me, there's this big thing that I always say is that you become an average of the, the people you hang around, right? And so what that means to me is you are constantly on this sliding scale, right? Where if you hang around people who are doing things bigger than you, then you either going to eventually get dropped out of that group or you're going to have to elevate yourself in order for you to be the median of that group, right? Um, if you're hanging around people who are on a level a little bit lower than you, then you're either going to fall off that group because they ain't on your level or you're going to regress into a space in which you can navigate and be comfortable in that circle. When I look at the Deion Sanders Jackson State situation, I see the gravitas and the pull that a Deion Sanders has, not only amongst that university in, in um, historically black college football, but also the landscape of, of um, I'm sorry, not only the university and the swag in that conference, but the landscape of historically black college football in general and also amongst the community that supports football in general. Um, I am a guy, I told you, I played a lot of football. I'm from Tallahassee, fam, you right down the street, but Florida State has been my squad. I know people in the same circle who really go hard for the Gators, for such and such, all in Florida. And we show some love to these, the BCUs, the Bethune Cookmans, the fam U's, but when you take a guy like Deion Sanders, who is the most recognized, one of the most recognizable figures in football period, you start to see the shift amongst the culture. The landscape of college football changes and you have a team like Jackson State who is now playing football on ESPN2. That's a big deal. What I want to do today is watch this clip from the post game. And there's so many nuance, um, how many things that Dion and his son talk about. To me, that I just feel like people need to hear. If you didn't watch it and, and you mess with me, you're going to appreciate the, 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 the insights and the information that Dion is going to share with you in this video. Let's get into it. So, like I said, we post game presser. You got Dion, you got his son Shador here. Um, <laughs> son of kick was kicking ass yesterday. I ain't even gonna lie to you. But let's just get into this. I'm, I'm gonna let Dion talk, and obviously, I'm gonna interject. Uh, I can drop the the link to this if you just want to watch it um, full all the way through, um, un unstopped. Um, you can do that um, on your own time. 
Uh, obviously, uh, if you can see here, I'm starting a video about three minutes, 35 seconds in. Um, and so prior to this, Dion has already talked about the, the water crisis that is happening in Jackson, Mississippi right now, and how that was a hurdle for his team and in their preparation for this season, but also a hurdle for the community, right? And they're trying to figure that out. Also talked about he lost his grandmother. Um, it was officially announced before this game, so he has some things on his mind. But he decided that, you know, obviously it's prime time, it's, it's prime time and prime time television and you know they had to show up and he had to be a leader and example for his kids but we're going to get into some of these other things and you'll see the culture shifts um, um from from prime time in jackson state uh, you have a new career high passing touchdowns and you went 29 for 33 i uh, was at one point Dang. Like, where 17 and 17. sorry it was like you know, um, kevin hart did it Dang. <laughs> <laughs> How, how were you able to lock in so early, and, and how did the game just... 29 for 33 is crazy. Slow down for you. Uh, really just taking the completions. Last year, the game was really fast. This year, everything slowed down. It's my second year. I got experience now. So mm. my pops, Coach Brian, told me going out there, hey, take what they're going to give you. So then I did that. I listened to him, man. That's the result. Can I tell y'all something? Um, he says something that I think is important, that I think is important, because a lot of folks uh, in, 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 the, in this world of social media, we get to see what you're doing today and we decide what that means for you for the rest of your life. And he says, um, it's my second year. I got more experience and I'm there. I listen to people who talk and criticize him from year one as if he didn't even deserve an opportunity to play year two, like he wasn't going to get better in the offseason, like he wasn't going to learn more. And now my man come out there 17 for 17 to start um, with three touchdowns, and, and, and folks is like, oh, he ready, the most exciting player in football. Come on, man. Jock Taylor, JJT Media Group. Uh, this is for Shador and Cameron. Uh, can you guys talk a little bit about how you were able to focus this week with the water issues and being off campus for a couple of days before the game? Football is an escape for all of us. So whenever we get in the locker room, whenever we get around football time, then everything goes out the window. So we knew how um, the magnitude of this game in the Orange Bottom Classic. So we just locked in, handled our business. I'm just um, I'm staying in a hotel for a couple of days and just being around the guys every day, all day. It kind of brought us closer together, just like a brotherhood, just out having fun. So we came out on the field. It was like we've been with these kids all day. So we just went out there and had fun, basically. I think what you'll see as also as a shift in the culture is – with this media attention and having to answer so many questions, you're going to see the level of media training amongst that team go up a bit. Um, if you listen to Shador and his answers, a lot of the things that he says mimics primetime. And we all know what type of level primetime has when it comes to the media and being able to retort and, and give you some game. Vaughn Wilson, HBCU Game Day. Coach Prime, after the Celebration Bowl last year, you drew a line in the sand. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, my guys up front will never be the way they were last year. you got to protect your quarterback. Do you think overall what you saw today is a correction of all of those issues that you saw in the Celebration Bowl? A correction as well as protection. Um, not only on the offensive side, but on the defensive side. It's a lot of new faces, a lot of new uh, a lot of new men that are more than capable of doing the job. When you lose a guy like James Houston, you, you tend to think uh, it's going to be a tremendous drop off. We have four guys that can straight out go get that quarterback. And uh, we have a secondary on the back end, and we're not even at full tilt right now. We, we played with a probably 60% of a Travis Hunter, and you see what he's capable of doing, but a 60% of Travis Hunter is 100% of anybody else. So. <sighs> Everybody keeps talking about what they had and what they acquired in the offseason. They forgot we got players too, mm. coaches too, personnel too. Uh, uplift us and take this to another level. We're not playing against swag, man. We don't think like that. We're just out there trying to dominate. We don't give a darn what the color of the uniform and who, who, whose name is on the front of the back. I'm thankful that their name is on the back. Did you saw that? That was a blessing. <laughs> it was good. So things do, do change when you say something about it. 
Now, once again, I'm talking about leveling that playing field, um, changing the landscape. Um, I, I believe he's making reference to the last time they played FAMU, no names on the jerseys, and he's like, yo, we got to get that done. And bam, you see that. Um, you, you see that he's also referring to how people thought that this game was going to be more competitive because the elevation of talent also on the FAMU side. So... What Jackson State brought to the SWAC last year, um, historically black college football, you saw teams as a whole decide that we need to revamp the coaching staff. We need to revamp the players. And he's saying, I know they did it, but we did it too. I love it. In the middle. Uh, Dwayne Nash from the Yard HBCU Sports from Hero Sports. Uh, this question goes to... Uh, the Sanders is both of you. Uh, Coach, you talked about, and I'm piggybacking off of Charles here. Um, I remember you bringing up uh, the word dominant mm -hmm. or dominate during the SWAC uh, media day. And uh, you guys were extremely dominant on all facets of the game. Shador, you're 29 for 32, also career high. Um, you had nine defensive possessions. God, I'm, do I feel like going through all these stats? Nine defensive uh, possessions where there were three plays or less. Can you and also you talked about the kicking game as well with the mm -hmm. field goal. What was the difference in terms of the way that you guys looked last year coming into this season? Well, we have a better understanding of what the coaches desire and what they want, mm. and we had more time to go find the type of player, smart, tough, fast, disciplined with character, and guys that want it, not guys that trick or treat and pretending that they want it. We're serious about this. We're serious about this. So we practice at a certain level. Um, the things that you see it. In the game today, we we do it in practice. So some of the letdowns that you saw in the game, we saw that foolishness in practice, and we're going to address that. But we we expect that. We don't expect nothing less. We expected that result today. That's not a surprise, is it? Was that a surprise to us? No, no. I've been visualizing it for a minute all week. You could keep going, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, 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 just preparation all week. Um, just sitting down talking to Coach Brett. He was ready. He was ready for this game as we always and um, I trust him. And as an offense, we all trust him going into this game. And it's just a family on offense. So now everybody got to eat. You know, like 12 different receivers got the ball today, yeah. by the way. Yeah, 11 of them from you. Yeah. 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 yeah, we don't play favorites. The end zone don't care who crosses it. I think that that's something big too, right? You see a lot of these um, major Division I schools just recruit. We're going to get the best players, and the competition is steep. You get over here, you're going to have to earn your keep. We got four or five-star running backs. We got such and such, and they're building that depth on this team. So I think that it's going to be something that is an eventual hurdle for them, but it's also going to be something to change the landscape when – you really start to get these guys who mess with Jackson State and who decide to go there because of that family, because of the the love that Coach Prime shows, because of the culture. And so it's going to be hard when you say, I'm going there because the culture, because of the love, because it feels like a family, and then – you don't get to play because your position is loaded and stacked and you got to wait your turn, but you wait your turn and they keep reloading and stacking at your position and you need to elevate your game. It's hard to do that. All of these different things. And, and that's just a hurdle. And I think with this transfer portal and all of that stuff, um, at some point it'll start impacting what they have going there because you see is a few times in this um, press conference where he mentions the addition of new players because guys last year wasn't getting it done, whether that be on the field or off the field. Keith Hadley, HBCU Digital uh, Network. I had a question, Coach Prime. I've noticed that you're building your program differently. You're potentially becoming the archetype of what many HBCU should be by adding analysts and other things that I haven't seen in the other. Isn't that what they do? You do. They do. And I was going to ask you the question. Well, why are we going to that? Why is it new to us? Correct. And why is it new to us? Yes, I don't, don't, why is it new to us? Isn't it how it's supposed to be done? I so that means we were doing something wrong over here. I concur. So when you get it right, we don't need hand claps to say we got it right. We, 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 this is how it's supposed to be done. 
I think people forget I played two sports at the highest darn level. I mean professional. I know how it's supposed to look. So when I bring it to fruition, a challenge, the authoritative figures on what it's supposed to look like, you got to ride with me. Because mm -hmm. it's for them. It ain't for me. I've had a good run. Still rolling though, but I had a good run. Everything is for them. I know how it's supposed to look. So the more we're able to assist them and give them statistics and situation and game type. I heard him on the plane. I was during their sleep and I, I woke up, you know, the offense coordinator was right here behind him and he was just going over every possible blitz package they had. He's like, I got them all. Is there anything I forgot? Because I know where they're coming from. I know anything they could do, I'm ready. Is there anything I'm missing? I said, dang. Oh, it's going to be a birthday. It's going to be a birthday. You know the song from 50. We're going to have a party. It's your birthday. I mean, it was that. that's how I felt on the plane when I heard him talking to the OC about all the different defenses that they could possess. Here is something that I think when I'm, we're talking about leveling the playing field, changing the landscape, this reminds me of a situation that I've seen in, in like my regular workplace where – Sometimes you get used to doing it the simple way, right? That's a lot of work. We know every defensive package they got, every blitz package they got, that's legwork. That not only am I, is somebody researching that, but then you got to convey that message to the team, right? So you can't just have it on the paperwork. You got to go through them in practice. You got to go through it in the meeting room. You got to go through it um, in the walkthrough. That takes time. And so sometimes when you have not had that experience and people start saying, yo, we're going to do what they're doing and what makes them successful, people would be like, bro, we're just trying to play the game. We just trying to get, oh, do we need to do all of that? We're, we're better. Our recruiting class is already better. Why do we need to then know all of the defensive packages when athlete to athlete, we should be straight. And it's about the preparation that I love. That's it's learning how to do that. When these guys leave Jackson State, they're not just going to be able to say, you know what, technically we're sound. We learned from Dion. What they're going to be able to say is intellectually we're sound. We learned from Dion, the analyst, the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, the cornerback coach, the, the weight strength training. It's, it's another level, and that's what I appreciate, the preparation. Too many times you'll have folks who just can't handle it. That's just too, why? Why do we need to do all that extra? We already good enough. My man Dion say, I've been to the mountaintop. I see what it looks like when it's done right. And I would be doing y'all disservice if I let you do it wrong. Come on now. And blitz packages. I love it. Coach. Tim Draft, HBCU. I noticed that De Dejon Warren uh, didn't play into the second half. Was that dis disciplinary or? No, that, that? That's, that's not, we don't, no, that's not a discipline thing. That's a balling thing. We we deep, man. We're deep. You you got to have, you could go from first to third team at one practice. Mm. We're that deep. What did you just say about the receivers? How many? Twelve. Twelve. And we left one with 14 touchdowns. Did y'all forget that? Mm. What's his name? Wide man. That's right. <laughs> Think about that. We left another D tackle that played a lot last year. If you know, mm. you got to get with it. Or we're going to keep going. Life ain't going to wait for you. We're not just teaching football lessons, man. We're teaching life lessons here. In the front. That's what I'm saying, man. I, one of the things that I have been preaching for a long time and have noticed is that we are in this, the, the beautiful thing of this social media climate and, and the era that we're in is that we're in like this renaissance of manhood. We're in this renaissance of culture. And it's no longer just about um, the, the skill. It's about how do you 
um, take things to the next level? How do you prepare? How do you be intentional? Whether that's financial literacy, whether that's uh, being a father to your children, whether that's being a man, community, all of these different things. It's another level of information being passed um, through these social channels. And, and, and that's why I got to big it up. The microphone coming. Vicki Jones, VMH Magazine and Sports, just to piggyback on what you said in terms of life lessons. Something that I saw, Shador, that you did whenever you guys um, got the trophy, mm -hmm. you went over, uh, you got the trophy, and then you went over, one, uh, to the fans, mm -hmm. two, you wanted to make sure all of us move back so that the entire team mm -hmm. can be a part of the photo. Mm -hmm. That spoke character, selflessness. Can you speak to that thought? Well, we do this for the city, for Jackson, Mississippi, <laughs> first and foremost. And the team is no me without the team. So just making sure we all get to share that moment because whenever you're in life, and my pops taught me this, when you're in life, you got everything, you still need people around you. You still, like, you can have everything in the world, but you could be lonely. So just being able to share this moment with everybody, with all my guys, people that we work every day with, it's beautiful. So that's why I did that. Dang! That was good. Wasn't it? I'm sorry, just, just coming out. This is good stuff, son. I, I, I love this because this ties into me of when we listen to my dog LaMelo Ball at times talk. And they will they'll ask him a question, oh how how, how did you uh how did you get the, to be able to play that fast? Is it instincts? And you say, Well my dad uh, what when when how do you overcome this adversity? Well my dad and that's what I hear from Shador. They ask him this question. He give this um, amazing answer, and, and it oftentimes stems from a quote that I got from my dad. If that's not a testament to fatherhood, then I don't know what is. You got if if uh, come on, man, you got to put some time in. If Dion dropping dimes and wisdom and all of that stuff, and and you see how that's impacting and elevating his son, you got to do that on your own uh, accord too. Come on now. <laughs> Mia Berry with Anscape, Orange Blossom Classic is over. You guys mentioned momentary escape. Now reality kind of sets in. You guys head back to Jackson mm -hmm. with a shortened week. How does preparation look like for that next game? Well, thank God that uh, we, we, we have a, a staff in, uh, I'm trying to say this correctly, and I'm not lost for words. We have a team behind us that supports us in every facet. So we've already talked about the hotel that when we get off the plane that the kids are going to go to, um, the food vendors that's going to serve the kids, um, how we're going to wash all the clothing at those separate hotels and what day we're going to leave now to go to Memphis. we got to change all of that. And when you talk about business, and that's why everybody's trying to send water. I'm like, we, we, thank you. We appreciate the water. We're not neglecting that. But that's like $15,000 a night mm. with, with the number of students that we're taking to a hotel. It's, 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 the campus is shut down. I can't. How can we go out there and dominate like that and take a child back to something that's shut down and you have no water, you can't even flush the darn toilet, you have no air. You have to think about all that stuff. So tonight, I'm, these are all the thoughts going to my head, make sure these kids are taken care of. We gotta make sure these kids take care of. How can we do what all we're doing, asking these kids to do what they've done, playing on national TV, then we take them back to some foolishness. Mm -hmm. So. Those are the type of things that are happening. Thank God we have uh, administrators that understand priority and to help us in uh, all facets. But we steal $15,000 a clip a night for the number of persons. That's a deal. And we got a deal on that. What I appreciate is the candidness of, of what my man Dion is saying, right? I think this is a full circle moment of when he talked before about understanding the level at which it takes the level of, of just environment that you have to be in to, to be able to succeed and be pro. And so when he says we can't even take them back to that because we all been in situations where at least when I, I know that I came up where things would be off. And the, uh, re the reality or the suggestion would be just go ahead and deal with it. Just go ahead and deal with it. 
you in the middle of a crisis right now, but you know what? Just make it happen. You know, uh, when when I was your age, I had to walk up the hill in, in snow. Uh, when I was your age, we didn't even have shoes. You got to deal with a little water. Put that water on the stove, boil it, and then do some things with it. And my man here is saying, we are going to foot the bill because we need them to dominate. Also, one of the things that I, I um, that he spoke about before um, we started this video was the idea of why they need to dominate and how that's important because in order for the, all any of these kids at Jackson State to get to that next level, they have to dominate. They have to put on damn near perfect performances. Shador Sanders um, rises to the acclaim that he has risen to in one game because he passes for 87 percent. Um, he has to maintain some semblance of that throughout the rest of the season or he's just an average quarterback at a HBCU. If you're down there, you can't go for, for 60%. Uh, what you going to do when we put you up here amongst these wolves and, and, and you, you can't throw 40% here. So domination is crucial. Um, I appreciate and I love what Coach Prime is doing down there at Jackson State, definitely leveling the playing field and changing the landscape of college football and the culture surrounding it um, as a whole, bringing some eyes to the programs and to what, what these young men got going, but while also, you know what I mean, really putting time in and building around those guys. Shemay Man, AB the Hero, we finna get up out of here. Peace. Be the hero. No, not peace. Plus one, triple B's, we out.